So if you've had your split sort of coinciding with mine, with my little four-day routine, four-day repeat, then I hate to break it to you, but this might have been a little unexpected. So today was supposed to be legs. Today was supposed to be a leg day for me. But my right quad has been kind of a little iffy. A little iffy. Not in the sense that I think I'm going to like do a set and something's really going to get ripped. Like that's not what I'm saying. But just to the point where it's a little bit of a twinge, which I don't want to just keep pushing through and pushing through, making worse and worse and worse until I do have some kind of you know, legit issue. So it feels pretty good today. Like I can kind of tell just by doing like a body weight sissy squat or just flexing my quad. Like, okay, it feels nice and good, but I want to give it one more day. I want to give it one more day. So instead of legs today, hamstrings and quads, I'm going to push it back until tomorrow. So what am I going to do today? Kind of a chillish lift, kind of a pretty chill lift. I'm going to do shoulders and forearms. So shoulders, just because I haven't done shoulders for a while, I kind of want to hit them. And then forearms, yeah, same thing. You know, so this isn't necessarily a day I would want to have in the in the routine on a weekly basis. But you know, fitting the fact that I kind of want to take an extra day before I move on to hit legs, I think this will be a pretty pretty good session. Pretty good freaking session. So if you're curious about the lack of shoulder training, what's going on? Construction guy spotting. But, uh, so if you're curious about the lack of shoulder training, just because I got fucking big shoulders, man. Relative to, and th I'm not saying like Death Star, like freaky size. I'm just saying relative to like my arms. Uh, and it's most notable when you do like a, uh, like a double bicep shot. You know, you get both arms up here like this. Because if you sort of look at, uh, look at your build, I guess if you're somebody who's into art, you kind of get what I'm saying. Like if you were to sketch somebody's build out like that, You'd sketch their shoulder as sort of like a, you know, a round ball. Same thing with their arms. Right? Triceps being the bottom half, thighs being the top half. And I want that, you know, ball of my arm in here. Its diameter, its size, I want it to be the same or at least bigger. Well, the same or bigger than my shoulders are. So arms need to catch up. But it has been a little while since I've done shoulders, so I just want to throw them in. Now, I say shoulders, but really I mean side and rear delts. Uh, front delts, I do not need any more work. Just because the, you know, up here, this upper part, right? Front delts, they're big enough. But, you know, thickening up the sides and the rear delts, I don't think that's going to add too much to my, uh, let's, um, let's just call it imbalance. You know, because I... You could have side delts that are too big. I guess I could see that. But I'd say for the general population, nobody... Well, I mean, I've never seen it where I looked at someone and said, Holy shit. Dude. Have you, you know you have to hit your whole body, too. Not just your rear delts. <laughs> you know, I mean, rear delts, that is not a build. or That's not a muscle which anybody is overdeveloping. Unless you're... Oh, crap. There's this one open bodybuilder way back. He had rear delts that were too developed. I, it's, I can't think of his name, so I guess it's kind of a stupid thing to even bring up. But how do you do rear delts? You know, what should you be doing? You know, just three sets of face pulls at the end of shoulders? I'm not sure that's going to cut it for you, you know? I'm not saying that you have to hit it with as much weight as you physically can. I'm not going to load my rear delts the same way I would chest. Or triceps. Hmm. Huh. But I do want to, you know, push it to push the weight at least to a point where I'm actually doing some legit damage. So I'm not just going to be doing light face pulls, you know, 10 reps, maybe get a little bit of a burn. You know, I'm really going to try to load them up as much as I can. And honestly, I think the process of doing rear delt work it's not directly, but a little bit indirectly, I think you're going to strengthen your shoulder just in its entirety, you know? 
I'd say you're probably most prone to shoulder injury, like, you know, rotator cuff, stuff like that, if your shoulders are really imbalanced. Your front delts are taking over way too much to the point where it kind of makes you hunch over like this. You got that internal rotation. So doing heavy face pulls for sure is getting a little bit of rotator activation for me. And then there's really only three movements that I like for rear delts. I'd say laying face pulls, which we'll get into later, reverse pec deck, classic, and then bent over lateral raises. So if I had to tell you the big three, you know, I really think that's it. You could probably find a couple of other niche movements, but that's all I end up doing. And every time I do rear delts, it's not like I go through those three every time. Sometimes if I'm doing laying face pulls and it just feels extra good, I'll just spam those for the whole lift. You know, the whole, like, five or six sets or how many I do. And then maybe the next day I would do reverse pec deck instead or all bent over lateral raises. It's, I'd say your rear delts, it's a pretty simple muscle to hit. You know, something like chest... That's where you want to do some pressing and some fly-based movements. You know, chess is a little bit more complicated in the way that you go about hitting it. But stuff like rear delts, you know, maybe biceps too a little, they're just a touch more complicated. But if you, if you do five, six really hard sets, you know you're real pumped up at the end of it. And I think that's what you got to end up doing, man. Rear delts, I just... They're certainly a strong contender for the most neglected muscle groups. Calves, calves is up there too. Hamstrings is up there. Rear delts. That's pretty much it. I'd say calves, hamstrings, and rear delts. Maybe take a look at your training right now. Reflect on what you've been skipping. Ideally, you haven't been skipping anything at all ever. But maybe, uh, maybe I'm just talking to not you. I know you've been hitting everything. I'm talking to everybody else who's been skipping. Maybe take a look at yourself like, oh, crap, yeah, I guess I have been, I have been cutting it short. Or has your hamstring volume, is your hamstring volume like half your quad volume? Are you only doing like two sets of rear delts a week? It's not going to cut it. Right? Every muscle group deserves an equal amount of attention. That's, uh, that's how I feel about that. Now, I say that, and then... I haven't done calves for like three days, so I guess maybe I'm an asshole too, but whatever. So once shoulders is done, which I haven't even talked about side delts, but it's just going to be like five or six sets of lateral raises, either with the dumbbells or with the machine. It's, it's a pretty simple muscle group to hit as well. I'll get into that in a little more depth as we're actually doing it. And once shoulders are done, probably do a shoulder pump check. just in between moving on to forearms, but then we can just get into forearms. I don't think there's even a point discussing it right now. We'll just talk about it when we're doing it. So let's get in there. Kind of a, a little bit of a weird day today, but it'll definitely serve a purpose. Definitely serve a purpose. Okay, so kind of like I was hinting at earlier in the car, just because your rear delts are kind of a small muscle and you don't want to hurt yourself by going too heavy doesn't mean that you shouldn't go as heavy as you can right now i understand that that could kind of cause some confusion when i say as heavy as you can i mean within the constraints of being able to do a good set right obviously if i tried to go as heavy as i could with dumbbell curls then i would just try to do as much weight as i could for one rep probably rip both biceps off, have a pretty bad time. But in the constraint of trying to go as heavy as I can for eight reps, for nine reps, then I think that's about the weights that you should be using. You know, when people talk about reps or they write out a workout and it says like three sets of dumbbell curls for 12 reps, I think people kind of forget the fact that you still have to make those sets really hard. Like for me to do a set of dumbbell curls with the 30s for 10 reps and have like another 20 reps in the tank versus a set with the 60s for 10 reps and have that pretty much be failure i mean for me it seems pretty obvious which which set do you think is better 
basic gists. Go as heavy as you can for reps. <clears throat> Add weight if necessary. Let's just spam these for a while. Oh. So in terms of overall load on the rear delts, I really don't know a movement that can beat this. I mean, I can, it's, I can get a good squeeze, and I can lift a pretty good amount of weight with like reverse pec deck or bent over lateral raises, but I think if I had to pick one movement for rear delts in perpetuity, I think this would be it. Now, it wouldn't be difficult for me to use a lot of traps and for me to use a lot of forearms and biceps while I do these reps, you know? And then I wouldn't really be working so much rear delts. I'd just be doing sort of my upper body, upper back, just doing an upper back row, right? So as I'm doing these, I'm really trying to focus on keeping my shoulders in the same position, right? So I'll kind of bend over a little bit. Even though I'm moving my arms like this, the center of my shoulder, you know, where my shoulder joint is sort of locked in position. I don't want that to move at all. Because when your shoulder moves back and forth like this, that's when you're getting a lot of trap activation. So I'm trying to keep my shoulders in the exact same spot. And I'm not trying to pull with my hands. Right? When you think about pulling with your hands, I feel like I end up working a ton of forearms and forearms and biceps. I'm almost trying to imagine like just sending enough signals to my fingers to hold on to the weight. Honestly, I should probably be using straps. That, that might make this a little better. But I don't know if I really need to. But I'm trying to just hold on to my weight, like use my fingers as hooks. And I'm not even really imagining pulling the weight towards my face. If I were to kind of close my eyes, I'm kind of imagining that my whole arm is allowed to move free. And I'm just doing a movement like this, right? But since my hands are holding onto the candle, then that movement like this, which I'm kind of imagining, is turning in to this get it so i really like this but you have to be able to keep your forearms biceps and traps out of the equation let's do a few more yeah. uh. 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 Okay. Yeah, a few more. Yeah. 
Okay. One more, one more, and then we're done. Move on to something. When it comes to lateral raises, how heavy should you go? And I'm not necessarily talking about a number. I mean, like, what's your max for a good set? I'd say you should probably not go so heavy that you really have to swing every rep. I'd say as heavy as you could go for legit reps, no swinging. That'll be good, but honestly, I don't know if sh I don't know if weight is necessarily the number one factor you should be looking at with your shoulder training, at least with side laterals, because I'd be totally satisfied doing just the thirties for like, you know, sets of, I don't know, well, thirty and just burn out getting a crazy pump. But you know, I guess you got to figure out what kind of style of sets work best for you. So fresh, I can throw the fifty fives around. I'm tempted to do the sixties, but I mean, let's just stick to fifty five. Okay, I lied. God damn it. Okay. Good opener. Let's do like maybe two or three more of the dumbbells. Let's just move on, do a couple of sets on the uh, on the side lateral machine, and then check the pump. I feel I'm definitely more than halfway there, side delt wise. One thing that I kind of I like, but also concerns me, is the fact that side delts are a very simple muscle group to hit. Right? I'd be perfectly satisfied. If all I did for my side delt workout was side laterals with the dumbbells, I'd be like, good lift, I feel fatigued, fully pumped, good burn, love it. But I feel like that simplicity also sort of, it kind of causes people to maybe treat side delts as though it's a movement which doesn't require a lot of volume. You know, I think sometimes people judge the volume of a workout based on doing like maybe two or three sets per exercise and then moving on. So if you're kind of following that logic, then if you're just doing one exercise for side delts, oh, I guess I only need to do like three sets and then I'm done. Oh man, I, uh, I gotta say this and take this to heart if you're somebody who's doing a real light shoulder day and your shoulders aren't ahead of the game on your build, do not be afraid to get repetitive, you know? Honestly, the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to change it up a little bit. But I wouldn't mind sitting there for fucking 10 sets of side laterals if that's what I got to do to stimulate growth. So, you know, don't treat that as something that's going to make the workout seem more boring. Just treat it as like, oh, sweet. I don't have to think about anything but getting my sets done. You know, that's, uh, that's just what I think about that. But machine, whole stack, burnout, same thing that I was doing over there. 
One more. Okay. 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 Let's check the shoulder pump. All right, let's uh, let's see how we're looking shoulder-wise. So for me, a shoulder pump should be pretty uh, disproportionate, just because they're already kind of big. So when they're pumped up, they're even fucking gnarlier. But even if they're a little ahead of the game, man, it feels fucking cool to have a shoulder pump. It's kind of its own thing. It's like chest pump's cool just because it well. Look at me trying to tell you that pumps feel cool. Come on. I think we already know this. This is common knowledge. But oh my goodness. I mean, that's just fucking cool. Yeah, still got a couple lines floating around, some striations. I gotta put on a little bit more weight for those to disappear. But. Yeesh. I mean, just adds to the lat spread, adds to a side try. Oh my goodness. Back double by. So this should be very shoulder biased. No, oh my goodness. All right. What else is there? I mean, really fucking nothing. So shoulders are now fully pumped. Now I just get to move on to some uh, some forearms. So let's put the uh, let's put the pump cover back on and get started with that. I'll say this. Forearms require minimal hype absolute well okay not absolute minimum hype obviously i want to go hard but i'd say that sort of eh, i guess somebody could argue that all of bodybuilding is mainly accessory movements you know if you think of a power lifter they would think of doing shoulders or whatever else as accessory work but i'd say kind of niche muscle groups like this I'd say this is the real accessory work of bodybuilding. So it's not like I have to play a certain song and really get in the zone to do these sets. The sort of, really the only chore of doing them is to do them. But if you feel like your forearms are kind of lacking, or you kind of want to at least see what a forearm pump is like, like I was saying about shoulders, you can't really be afraid to get bored. You know, I'm just going to sit here for the next 10 minutes, do a set, play my phone a little bit, do another one back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I'm done. So when it comes to forearms, I'll start with the back, all this kind of funky stuff moving around when I straighten my fingers out when I, what is this? Is this flexion? Whatever. All right, I'll start with the back. So the best way that I know how to do that is light dumbbell, like this is just a 20. Pop a squat on a bench or any kind of seat, hang it off your quad like this, and then just moderately controlled, just like that. You know, I'll probably do 20 reps or so Maybe not until complete failure, but just to the point where it's really burning. And I'm like, okay, that's good. Put it down, rest a little while. So I'll just show one and then we can move on to the back part of my forearms. Or would this be the, f whatever. But like I'm saying, don't get discouraged. Just sit here for, you know, 10, 20 minutes, allocate some time for it. And once you've gotten a really good forearm pump, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
Okay. One more thing before we move on. I'm still gonna do like five more of these, but don't be afraid to start light. This is a very strange movement. In day-to-day -day life, you're never really working these muscle groups. So if you try to go a little bit too heavy, it might kind of make your wrist a little uncomfortable. You know, don't be afraid to start with a 10. Don't be afraid to start with a five. As long as you can get pumped up and they're burning, you're doing something right. But five more of these-ish, and then I'm gonna do some shit working this bottom part of the forearm. Okay, now, back of the forearms are pumped up, even just straightening my fingers and trying to pull them back. I mean, I don't want to say on fire, but pretty close. So now, I'm going to flip the script, and instead of doing stuff that works my forearms in this wet manner, I'll do some stuff that hits them this way, right? If you think this is like the flat chicken wing, now I'm trying to work that thick side. So... There's all sorts of stuff you can do. I mean, I've kind of dabbled through probably at least all the main movements. Like, you can stand up with a barbell behind your back and sort of do, you know, barbell barbell forearm curls like that. Or you can grab a, uh, a straight bar on the cable and do forearm curls like this. I like that one a lot. But probably the one that I'd attribute most of my forearm growth to, I haven't been hitting them recently just because they're big enough. But when I used to hit them every arm day, this is probably the main movement I would do. Sit on a bench, long ways, grab something heavy. I mean, as heavy as you can do comfortably. And by comfortably, blah, 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 blah. By comfortably, I mean, you know, not feeling like you're at risk of tearing something. I wouldn't want to try grabbing like the hundreds. It's nuts. But 60, it's pretty heavy, but I can do it without fear of injury. I'd say that's kind of a good grading scale on what kind of weights you should be using. So work up to it if you've never done it before. Don't just jump up to something crazy. But just kind of get into this sort of position, like you're going into second gear, and then you know, just pump them out. And it's the same thing as doing the reverse curls. I mean, with these, you can probably get a little bit closer to actual muscular failure. But, you know, go till you get a good burn, put them down, switch arms, and then repeat. If one forearm is bigger than the other, um, for reasons I think we are aware of, but also whatever your dominant hand is, your forearm is probably going to be more developed just from writing, whatever, everything. So maybe start with the forearm that's a little smaller. Uh, for me, they used to be my left forearm. So when I would do these, I'd do, you know, 20 reps, whatever with the left one. And if the right one could get 25, I'd still cut it at 20 so that the smaller one could catch up. But let's, uh, let's just get into this. I'll probably just show the first one, but I'll do probably five or six and then we can cut to the forearm pump and uh, get out of here. Yeah. <sighs> 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 Yeah, four or five more. One thing that you should, uh, well, I guess you'll find out if you do these, but as you're doing them, the dumbbell is kind of going to want to spin around in your hands. So, honestly, if you don't have a couple of calluses built up, then 
if you do these on a consistent basis, you'll get some. But I'm going to sit here and enjoy myself. Another five sets-ish. And then uh, let's just jump to the pouring pump. Hopefully they're nice and veiny. All right, maybe not the absolute freakiest, but they're definitely more pumped up than before. Let's see how they're looking relative to the... Uh... Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a solid chunk of meat right there if I've ever seen one. Eesh. Not at the same level yet, but... I mean, tricep there, forearm there. If I add an extra five pounds of forearm mass and an extra five pounds of tricep mass, then we'll get we'll be getting close to recreating this Lee Priest picture. Now all I need is a uh, Tom Platt standing behind me. I feel like I've said that analogy a couple times before, but most certainly the king of forearms. Well, could be debatable. We all know about Ramon. But let's uh, let's take a seat and discuss. Let's make sure I'm still in frame. There we go. Perfect. So, one thing that you kind of have to maybe get comfortable with is the fact that every lift is not going to be a high intensity. Well, obviously they should all be high intensity. They're not all going to be a crazy high energy fucking like. PR set like like every every set fucking hundred percent hype you know that's not how they're all gonna be sometimes you just got lifts where the main goal really is to just kind of do it and I don't want to say go through the motions because obviously you should be pushing yourself like I was making sure I push myself on all those sets of forearms and all those sets of you know side laterals but for me and I think for a lot of people training your shoulders and your forearms it's just not a very taxing thing to do like apart from maybe a little bit after those really heavy sets of lateral raises with the dumbbells you know i was never out of breath today right i'm just doing my set dealing with a burn racking the weight and then repeating you know so i think what i'm really trying to say is don't get discouraged if you feel like you're just you know, going through the motions obviously push yourself but you're still doing work you're still getting a pump you're still putting in working sets under the belt, which that's pretty much what we're all trying to do. If you get more and more and more good working sets, good workouts under your belt over time, I think you can expect to see at least a higher probability of progress. You know? And if you're not seeing that progress, then you got to take a step back, reassess what you're doing, maybe find some aspects of your training which are maybe not totally up to par, change them up, fix them, and then see what happens next. But shoulders, forearms, good. I'm going to go home, probably stop at Cane's on the way, make sure I'm nice and well-fed and well-rested. And then tomorrow's leg day, I plan on going. Let's just say somebody might have to call the insane asylum. That's the goal. But let's get in the car. There we go. Shoulders. And forearms complete. Come for complete. So, yeah, like I was saying, this is not a lift that I really would want to have like in my weekly split. But on rare occasion, it happens to come up. So, I'd say probably every so often, if there's ever, for you know, whatever reason, a situation where I want to delay whatever the lift is like today was gonna to be legs but I ended up delaying it until tomorrow so I got a gap in the little system this is usually what I'll throw in just little shoulders and forearms right. so I'd say eh, this is kind of worth discussing when it comes to your bicep training I feel like a lot of people think that they're getting forearm work in because you know I do my set of hammer curls at the end of biceps I do three heavy sets of hammer curls that's gonna work my forearm that's how I hit forearms I'm not convinced man not really you know I'd say in hammer curls at best they're getting an even amount of work as your um, as your bias but really they're just kind of a secondary muscle that's being activated in the movement, you know? 
I'm not satisfied with the tricep work that I get from doing chest. Sure, my triceps get activated when I do any kind of heavy pressing. And at the end of chest, my triceps are a little bit, they probably have maybe a minor pump. They got a little bit of fatigue. But that is not enough to really stimulate growth, at least not in my opinion. So I want to hit, well, let's say, if I have a muscle that I want to grow, then that means that I want to hit it directly. AKA, if I want my forearms to grow, I'm not going to do back without straps and think that like squeezing all the handles that I'm holding on to is enough for really good forearm growth. I'm going to take them out of the equation, use my straps, and then hit forearms directly. I'm not a power lifter, so when I'm thinking of, actually I guess that, that doesn't, yeah, that, that statement doesn't even relate, but my sort of approach to muscular growth, to muscular training is, I mean I feel like I've said this six times already, but if you want to grow something, then you need to hit it and work it directly. If you're, uh, I was just talking to somebody earlier, he, uh, we were kind of just shooting shit, but he was asking me about neck training for football. He was like, how do I, uh, what kind of movements should I do for neck training? And I mean, any enlightened lifter has gotten a neck pump at least once. You know, you hang your head off, you lay down, you head, you lay down on a bench, you hang your head off the edge and you hold like a 45 pound plate and you kind of balance it in your forehead and you sit here and you do curls like that. You sit sideways with a 25, go sideways like that the other way. You know, If your neck is, you got a pencil neck, and I'm not saying that to be derogatory, I'm just, if you know your neck can kind of thicken up a little bit, then as a lifter, at least, you don't have to just sit there and think, oh crap, I got a scrawny neck. Boo hoo. You can grow that shit, man. You got control over that. It just is going to take you know, relatively frequent work and if you're in a public gym potentially looking a little bit foolish if I saw somebody doing a hardcore neck workout um, even though I'd say I'm a pretty accepting guy of uh, what's the uh, crap. of eccentric workouts in the gym I might think it's a little funny but, I mean, fuck, man, if my neck was kind of on the thinner side to the point where I could actually notice it looking at myself, shit, man, I'd probably add that in at the end of every, I don't know, maybe every back day, maybe every shoulder day, I don't know. But you got to do what you got to do. That's all I'm really trying to say there. So, plan for tomorrow, cardio, food, legs, and that is, that's, the, that's pretty much the thick of it. So, let me, uh, let me ask you this, man. How many of you have already failed your New Year's resolutions? Or how many people do you know who have already given up? I'd say more than, holy shit. What's the, what do you think the real number is? It's been a week. It's got to be more than half. It's got to be more than like 65% guaranteed. And do I think that's an issue of uh, people's internal discipline or motivation or whatever? Maybe not. I just think the idea of these resolutions are kind of goofy. Ugh. Maybe it's good. I mean, I'm sure there are freaks out there who started off their journey on... In it. I mean, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be working out. But the New Year's resolution idea got somebody going. If it didn't, then people wouldn't even talk about it. But for the most part, I think it's kind of just... It's not the strongest call to action. You know, you really have to... I feel like the most abrupt changes which are going to happen in somebody's life in terms of changing their actions or habits or whatever, for the most part, those are going to come at moments of relatively intense emotional states in a way you know like I feel like a good example of this is when people talk about hitting rock bottom right when you get to a point where you really can look at yourself objectively and think like holy shit what have I been doing uh, like that's a state that's a mental state where you are very prone and you have a very high potential to be able to say 
okay, I can't do this anymore. I got to change something, you know. And I'm not saying you have to be a crazy hard on you, on yourself or hard hard on. You don't have to be a crazy hard ass on yourself, but I think that people who can really take control of their habits and you know daily routines they're not just people who have you know crazy internal discipline or you know whatever else i guess that's probably true but it's not just that kind of person you know i feel like most of the best doers that i ever see and that when i hear them talk about stuff i i really listen it kind of perks up my mind are people who have a firm and relatively objective grasp on reality and i'm not saying that you know i'm talking about people who aren't crazy i mean people who can understand you know, the reasoning and the logic between or uh that kind of causes them to do certain things and whatever else you know it's like i might not be really explaining this well enough but it's somebody who can really look at themselves and think Okay, what do I need to change? What have I been doing that's holding me back? What have I been doing that I know I really shouldn't be doing? Or kind of the opposite of that, what should I be doing that I know I haven't been doing? And if you can kind of have an open and honest discussion with yourself like that and think like, okay, maybe I really shouldn't be doing this or that. Maybe I've been, oh crap. I haven't been getting any studies in on the weekend because I keep going out. Fuck, God, Jesus. Anything. Anything like that where you can have a phrase. Okay, I know that I shouldn't be doing this or that I should be doing this. You know, if you can really do that and have that sort of thought process in your own mind, then I think that's the best case scenario for you to be able to reroute what you're aiming at. You know, so take with that what you will. That's, uh, I'm just trying to say some stuff, which, like, if I hear a motivational TikTok and it's talking about that sort of thing and it's got, like, that's, that's the kind of stuff I like listening to. That stuff gets me riled up, makes me get a little upset with myself when I haven't been doing my laundry or for, or if I haven't been working on my homework. You know, just basic low level shit like that. And then, you know, getting good at that, it'll let you kind of, it'll just let you get better at doing shit. And I'd say the more shit you're able to do on a consistent basis, the more results you'll be able to get in whatever field those things are in. Blah, 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 improvement, whatever, grinding, gains, progression, any other positive buzzword under the sun. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we're freaking aiming for. So... Now I just get to go home, pet the cat, play with the dog, probably watch a movie or something, I don't know, chill. I, uh, oh, I'm teetering on going back to episode one of One Piece. If I don't find a new show soon, I think that's what I'm going to do. But that's unrelated to lifting, so I'll see you next time for legs.